LPT check in with your kids to make sure they understand your idioms. I told my 12 year old that she sounded like a broken record because she kept asking for the same thing repeatedly. She gave me a weird look so I asked her if she knew what it meant. She thought a broken record slows down and distorts voices. So I had to explain what it actually meant. This is just a reminder that some phrases we grew up with might not be understood today. I grew up on a dairy farm. Someone at school said till the the cows come home and I thought okay. Till about 4 p.m. then. My girlfriend's mom used to tell her that she was a sight for sore eyes. And she thought it meant that her mom was calling her ugly. My parents taught me never to swear so I thought I wasn't allowed to make promises for basically all of elementary school. As a child I remember seeing billboards that said drinking and driving kills or adverts on the TV that said don't drink and drive. I'd get so upset with my parents when they'd grab a Coke from the cup holder of their car and start drinking from it. My kid asked me what it meant to hang up the phone at the dinner table a couple of years ago. It stopped me in my tracks. Suggestion if your child has known a pet named Snowball that has since died. Maybe don't use the phrase a snowball's chance in hell without clarifying that you mean a literal snowball. Kept encountering red stop lights with my parents one day and hit out with it's like the red light district here when I was 8 why oh my son was in the back seat maybe three years old ish and heard me say to my husband on the phone that way we could kill two birds with one stone he started crying and screamed why are you killing birds single quote when I was about eight I spilled a cup of sprite all over myself at a restaurant and I started crying my dad was helping me clean up and said don't cry over spilled milk and I started crying harder and said it's not milk. Not an idiom but I dated a girl in high school who used the word fetish incorrectly. She thought it meant something you really like which I guess technically it does but I nearly choked on whatever I was eating the first time she said puppies are so cute. They're my fetish. She then refused to believe me when I told her that's not how to properly use that word. Once when I was younger and in the car with my mom and little brother we were stuck behind a slow car in a parking lot. My mom exclaimed come on grandpa and my brother from the back seat popped his head up and said. Grandpa where? My kids are learning to use a computer. And wanted to save a file they had made. I had to try to tell them which icon to click without saying the picture of the disc because that meant nothing to them. Watched Mr. Bean with my daughter. Had to explain what a TV aerial was first and then why it was funny it reacted to him moving. No reason she'd ever have known those things haha. -ha. A few years back when my kid was in middle school she asked me what an encyclopedia was. I told her Google but like a book. Then we played this game where I gave her a list of names of items and for her to tell me what their use was for like a Walkman, antenna, 8-track, cassette, rotary phone, etc. That was hilarious. Oh and explaining how Netflix started as mail DVD service. Just blew her mind. Last night I told my four-year-old I was going to jump in the shower and she got very concerned and replied Daddy that's not safe seeing a lot of other phrases in comments that I use as well. Great reminder LPT. Kinda the same idea. But when I was a toddler my parents took me on a car ride to Seattle. When I asked where we were going. They answered. We're going to Seattle. My confused response was who's Adel? It's been 20 years and they still bring it up whenever we go on a family car trip. It's raining cats and dogs mom that's water. When my daughter was two or three. My wife told her you're driving me crazy. She responded. No way. Mama. I can't drive. Yet. It must be Dada doing that.
When my daughter was younger, maybe 10 years old, I took her to the doctor. Doctor said she was going to prescribe her a tablet for her illness. Daughter got excited and asked if it would have games on it. Not that kind of tablet. Sweetie. My wife told my 17-year-old son that I was cutting a rug while we were at a wedding he genuinely thought that I destroyed something. I work with young people. We got a bag of old 45 records. Girl opens bag. Looks. Funny look on face. Pulls one out. Cool. Vintage CDs. I'm 59 co-worker was 62. We looked at her and bust out laughing in tandem. You are playing with fire when you are swimming with sharks. I'm 26 and until last month I always thought having your work cut out for you meant like it's pretty much already done. It should be easy. Nope apparently it means quite the opposite and I neither understand why nor how I've gotten this. Far hearing it so often without getting that. When my niece was four or five she was very concerned when I was excited about something and said that's sick and I had to explain to her that it means something is cool too. When I was a young kid, I thought getting fired meant you got killed with fire. I was really worried when my dad said they were having layoffs and firing people at work. In second grade one told my teacher that I brought pot brownies in for class because that's what my mom always called them. I thought pot was a synonym for homemade or secret recipe. My mom has never actually made edibles but I guess I overheard her joking with her friends. I was sent to the principal and my mom was called in as well. Dot and your parents I asked my teenage son what a MILF was. Now we're both scarred for life. It's funny how when I was a kid, time out meant hold up. Let's pause for a sec. I was playing with my kid one day and I said time out and he busted out crying thinking he was being punished for something. Total misinterpretation of idioms there. It's not just kids. It's non-native English speakers too. Between idioms, colloquialisms, and slang. English must be very hard to learn. We have so many idioms. I bet most of us can't talk for more than two minutes without using at least one. I had an elementary school teacher tell me something I was doing was a pet peeve. Didn't know what a peeve was but pets are good right? Kept doing it. I had to explain to my 12-year nephew that a burn is an insult. I'm eight years old riding with my mother in the back seat of her car. I really have to use the restroom. It's becoming urgent. Mama, I have to goo. Squeeze your cheeks. We're almost there. I reached up to my face and squeezed my cheeks. Don't worry. I made it safely. But my mother was in tears laughing. In first or second grade we had a project for learning idioms. Every kid had to draw their explanation definition of their assigned idiom. I got crocodile tears and drew a crocodile with big streaming tears. We hung them up in the classroom and went through all of the phrases to learn their meanings. I was six or seven when my parents had a big argument in the living room. I could hear my mom yelling. So I crept out as far as I dared to hear what was happening. She yelled at my dad get off my back. I couldn't see them, only hear them, and I thought my dad had jumped on her back like a piggyback ride. It took me a while to understand what it meant. Also, while not an idiom, it's weird to have lived your life in a time when something viral was dangerous. Like HIV, and now people are doing their best to go viral. I'm 6th grade 1 thought being a virgin meant someone who doesn't lie. So I would sure everyone they could trust. Cause I was a virgin. One time my dad said his buddy let him borrow a ladder for the weekend. I said oh so like friends with benefits. There was a long pause. When I was a kid, my grandfather told me a joke. The punchline was I left my harp in Stan Fran's disco. It was a pun on the song I left my heart in San Francisco. 
He was sad I didn't get the pun.